Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we'll be um, presenting our seventh Ramadan advice on the eighth day of Ramadan. And this advice uh, is focused on a common uh, practice <clears throat> for most of us, many people in Ramadan, uh, and that is to sleep excessively. With the eating and staying up late at night, etc., there's a tendency for us to make up for it during the daylight hours. But, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did tell us, وَجَعَلَّ النَّوْمَ Subata, he, he made the sleep for rest, the sleep of, of night. وَجَعَلْنَا Layla Libasa. He made the night, you know, a covering for us. And the, the sleep which is supposed to take place there, a, a rest, a rest for us. So that's the time of rest. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشَ And I, he made the day, the daytime, as the time to be moving around and uh, taking care of one's daily needs. This is, the, this is the reason which Allah has given, Allah who created us and knew uh, and knows what we need, what is best. So it is better for us to keep this order, not to make a change simply because Ramadan has come. In some countries, you know, the work hours for Ramadan will shift. Rather than starting at 8, they may start at 10. Finishing at 5, they may finish earlier at 4 or 3. Um, and this is supposed to be, you know... Um, taking into account the fact that people are fasting and things happening at night, etc. But actually, we don't have any evidence in the time of the Prophet وسلم, of timings changing, people's life patterns changing. Now, Ramadan is like any other month in the year with regards to our prayers. Did the prayers short? Did the prayers change? You know, when we're traveling, we're allowed to join prayers, shorten prayers. So there is an actual change in the prayer taking into account travel. But Ramadan, there is no change. You know, we don't pray any prayer any earlier or pray any prayer later. No. Uh, what we're doing is we're praying tahajjud earlier, which wasn't from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, no other change. So in other words, Ramadan should fit into our normal pattern of life. Because fasting is essentially a way of life. It's a part of life. If we look at all of the recommended days of fasting, it comes up to about a third of the year. Whether it's uh, Monday and Thursday of every week, three days of the full moon, every month, six days of Shawwal, the fasting on other recommended days throughout the year, 
it adds up in total to about a third of the year. So we're supposed to be engaged in fasting throughout the year. Of course, for most of us, we only fast in Ramadan. We don't fast any time outside of Ramadan. And that's why when the fast comes in Ramadan, you know, we feel listless, we feel tired, you know, we feel we want to sleep more because we've eaten more, and all these other things. Because fasting for us is not a way of life. It's just Ramadan. And that's the sad part. Because fasting and its goals are needed throughout the year, throughout our lives. Not just once a year. You know, though we talk about Ramadan as being that month of focus, you know, um, you could call it some kind of a refresher course and all these other kinds of things. The fact of the matter is that Ramadan is an example of moderation. It is a practical uh, example of being generous, being conscious of the needs of others, avoiding filling our stomachs, praying at night, and all of the different practices, reading Quran, you know, that are normally just associated with Ramadan. They, we, they really, the only thing we could say that is really unique to Ramadan is that at the end of Ramadan we have eight. Otherwise, these days of fasting, tahajjud, all of these things are supposed to be in our lives. So, as much as possible, we should try to keep our lives functioning the way we normally do. But we just have this added value. We have these additional uh, principles, practices, controlling our tongues, you know, our eyes, our ears, careful not to listen to gossip, not to look at what is haram, not to speak about uh, evil, uh, not to speak evil, uh, not to be, be angry, uh, avoid argumentation, you know, all of these different uh, practices which we focus on in Ramadan, these are practices we need to use throughout the year. So, really, Ramadan is life. Ramadan is a part of our lives. It should be. We eagerly await its arrival and we leave it with some sadness, especially the Eid. But reality is that it should never go anywhere. Its lessons, its benefits, its guidance should be with us throughout the year. So let us avoid excessive sleeping. And the scholars of the past used to speak about this as being one of the corruptors of faith. Corruptors of the heart. Sleep can become an escape mechanism for not dealing with the realities of life. When you have too many problems, things, etc. Okay, just go to sleep. Put the sheet over your head. Cut off the rest of the world. Forget that. Forget it.
forget your problems. Well, it's natural to some degree, but let's not make it Ramadan. Let's not make Ramadan just that. A lot of sleeping. Too much sleeping. Let's keep that sleep within the same uh, confines, eight hours a day or six hours a day, depending on your age. You know, let's keep it there. Don't add any more. There's no need to. Inshallah. That way, we can make maximum use of the day. وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ As Allah said. And I made the day a time and a place to seek your livelihood, your bounties, to be active, to be engaged, to be productive and beneficial. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. La ilaha